Hallelujah. If you have your Bible with you this morning, turn to Job the 8th chapter. Job the 8th chapter. And we're going to pick this up in the 8th verse. If you read verse 1, it lets us know who's doing the speaking to Job. It's one of his comforters. <laughs> Amen. One of his comforters. <clears throat> Bildad. That's Job the 8th chapter. Uh, it's in the Old Testament. And we know from the story of Job how that things kind of went south for him. Or at least it looked like that in the natural. Amen. When the end was done, it would be just like it is with us today that all things work together for His good. Amen. Hallelujah. And he would have three friends that would come along and they would try to uh, tell him exactly where he went wrong and how come he was having the problems he was having in his life. And as many times it is was then and it is now, they begin to say, Job, you've sinned. That has to be why you're going through so many things. You know, we still got a lot of people who believe that today. Yeah. If you're going through a trial, well, you just must be out of the will of God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you're in the valley, that must be out of the will of God. <clears throat> Nothing could be farther from the truth than that. But anyway, that's not exactly what we're going to talk about. Even though these comforters would come to him and say some things that that weren't necessarily, did not necessarily apply to Job's situation at the time, there's still a lot of truth to be found in the things that they did say to him. Amen? And this is some of that. We pick it up where Bildad is talking to Job in the 8th chapter of the 8th verse. He tells Job, he says, For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to search of their fathers. Now listen to this. For we are but of yesterday and know nothing, because our days upon earth are a shadow. Shall not they teach thee? Who? Shall not who teach thee? He's telling him to inquire of the former age, to look at the past examples of people that had lived before him. And shall that not teach him something? Amen? It would do us good sometimes to look at the examples, the things that happen in other people's lives and the reason that they happen and learn from those things. Learn from other people's mistakes. Amen? Realize where they went wrong and don't make the same mistake. So he's telling Job, shall not they teach thee and tell thee and other words, other words out of their heart. Now listen to what he tells him. Can the rush grow without the mire? And I could, you could put this on the front of the New York Times today and it would apply to our nation, the largest majority, not just of the world, but of the church as well. It says, can the rush grow without mire? Can the flag grow without water? While it is yet in his greenness and not cut down, it withered, it withereth before any other herb. Why? Due to the lack of water. He says, can the flag grow without water? Oh, and he's getting ready to apply this to man. You say, what in the world? We know that plants cannot grow without water. The majority of them anyway. You might find some kind of weird species that doesn't have to have any water. At least they don't have to have very much. Amen? Things like cactuses and things like that. But for the most part, the largest percentage of plants must have water. And that's what he's telling him. Can it live without the water? It says while it's in its greenness, while it's green, and it hasn't been cut down, nothing has happened to it, yet the fact that it doesn't have any water will cause it to die. It cannot survive on its own. Then he says, hey, Brother Billy, what in the world does that have to do with anything? Listen to what he says. So are the paths of all that forget God. Did you hear that? So are the paths of all that forget God. He give us an example of this plant. Can it live without water? Well, then he turns it around and says, Can man live without God? Just as this plant dries up and it withers and it dies and it fades away, because it doesn't have any water, so will man without God. So are the paths of all that forget God, and the hypocrite's hope shall perish. 
He's saying, Job, can a man live without God? Is there any hope without God? He goes on to expound on this even farther. Oh, this bless my soul. It says, whose hope shall be cut off and whose trust shall be a spider's web. He shall lean upon his house, but it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. Who? Those who forget God. Amen. The Lewin brothers sung the song years and years ago. And the name of it was, If We Forget God. Brother David has sung it here before. If he had been here this morning, I'd have had him sing it this morning. But the words are this, and they may have written it. If we forget God, Satan will rule. If we forget God, our nation is doomed. Bildad, Job's friend, expounds on something here that all goes way past Job's situation. But it rings of truth nonetheless. Man without God cannot survive. Oh, we think we can. Man, the creation, believes that it has become greater than the Creator. And this is not a, this is not a strange thing. You find this all in the pages of the Bible that you have this morning. Why do you think these kings set up statues and commanded people to bow down and worship them because they believed they were on the same level as God? They believed that they deserved worship. Man throughout all of the ages of time have went through what we would call destruction, pain, grief, and torment simply because they forgot God. He says if a man forgets God, his hope will perish. His hope shall be cut off. His trust shall be as if he trusts in the spider's web. Now spider web might look pretty with the light glistening off of it. It might hold up the spider, but it can't even sustain the least bit of breeze. Some of them can't. There, it, can't, it can't sustain any weight whatsoever. Neither can your life without God. It'll be as a man who leans upon his house and his house will fall. The man who forgets God. He shall lean upon his house and it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. A spider web is very slight. It's very thin. It can bear no weight. It is frail, it is light, it is tenuous. It will sustain almost nothing. How many people in here today has ever walked through a spider web? And usually it's out where you, you think, my goodness, how in the world did he build one way out here? Or at least the strings of one. Amen? But you had no problem at all going through it because it cannot sustain anything. It cannot sustain any weight. It cannot sustain any force. Neither can the life of those who forget God. And this word forget here, it means to mislay. It means to be oblivious of. It means to put out of your memory and out of your attention. It means to forget. Say, Brother Billy, what in the world does that have to do with us? Oh, much. Our nation as we know it have forgotten God. Mm -hmm. Most of the church, uh-oh, yeah. most of the church today, Brother Sleese, have forgotten God. Amen? Oh, they use His name. But they've got Him as the church of the Laodiceans in the book of Revelation locked outside the door and He can't get in. It ain't just they won't let the sinners in and the drunkard in and the prostitute in. They won't let Jesus in. Really? He stands at the door and knocks. For those who have forgotten God, and it's easy to forget Him. The Bible says whenever Israel waxed fat, she kicked. You know what she did? She forgot about God. Why did the children of Israel, while Moses was up on the mountain getting the Ten Commandments, why did the children of Israel form and fashion the golden calf and bow down to it? Because they forgot God. They chose to put God out of their memory. Man does that. Many Christians forget God except for Sunday morning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Except for Sunday morning, the rest of the week, you couldn't tell if they saved or lost. You couldn't tell if they knew God, if they even realized there was a God. 
Oh, I read a statement this past week. Listen to the truth of this statement. Saying that you believe there is a God and living like there is a God is two different things. Oh, a lot of people say they believe there's a God. But not a lot of people live like they believe that there is a God. Amen. America can claim that they know God all they want, but their fruits show otherwise. Amen. And if a nation forgets God, the old song says Satan will rule. If we forget God, our nation is doomed. Now he talks here about a man who leans upon a house and it cannot stand. And we hear Jesus talking along these same lines in Matthew, the seventh chapter, when he talks about a wise man that built his house upon the rock. And the storms came, and the wind came, and the rain came, and it beat upon it. It hit upon it. But the Bible says that his house remained. It stood. It didn't fall. But then he talks about a fool. A foolish man. Listen to me. A foolish man that built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came. And the winds blew. And it beat upon that house. And what happened to it? It fell. It's interesting to me that Jesus calls this man a fool. Because the Scripture says the fool had said in his heart there is no God. That leads me to believe that this foolish man, this fool that built his house on sand, maybe he had decided there was no God. Maybe he had decided to forget about God. Amen? Which is what most of people have done at one point or another. He forgot about God. He forgot about the foundation. And he began to build upon sinking sand and the same storms that came to him are the same storms that came to the man, the wise man that built upon the rock. Listen, i got news for you. Whether you're saved or whether you're lost, whether you're born again or whether you're still lost in your sins and on your way to hell, everybody goes through stuff. Amen? If you think you're going to get saved and you're going to get born again, you're going to get into the church and everything's going to go rosy for you, you're in for a rude awakening. Everybody goes through trials. Everybody goes through storms. Everybody goes through valleys. But only those that hang on to the nail-scarred hand of Him. Amen. Only those that have their foundation built upon that solid rock. The old song that says, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and His righteousness. Then and only then can you stand the storms of life. You will find yourself sticking a revolver in your mouth and pulling the trigger without God. You will find yourself... If you forget God, you will find yourself overdosing. Oh, you will find yourself having to take pills to sleep and pills to get up and shooting stuff in your veins and sniffing stuff up your nose if you forget God. And you will find yourself building your life upon something that can sustain no more weight than a spider web. Really? Amen. You see, we just had this big debt thing going on, you know, in Congress and the Senate were battling back and forth and trying to decide how to handle it and trying to come up with a solution and, and you know, everybody sitting on the edge of their seats and then whenever they did come out with something, a lot of people cheered and some people jeered and some people hated it and some people loved it and a lot of people were relieved. Some people thought they weren't going to get their Social Security checks. Some people thought they weren't going to get their disability. Some people thought their businesses would close. Whatever the case may be, they sit around and worry. And now they feel some sign of relief. Well, I don't want to throw you into no panic attack this morning. But it's just a matter of time, my 